If you're going to make 2026 the year you finally start your raw editing journey, but aren't sure which app to use, then stick around because that's exactly what we're answering in today's video. We're counting down the best raw editors for 2025. As always, this annual list is designed to help consumers make smarter purchase decisions, taking into account the latest improvements and my continually expanding hands-on experience with each editor, which grows year after year. But before we get onto the list, let's run through the criteria, which is essentially the same as last year. As always, we prioritize adjustment quality, masking capability, and any other features that meaningfully improve the editing results. We're also only considering editors that offer a perpetual license, which is far more consumer friendly. In addition, the app must have received significant updates over the past year, showing the company's commitment to continuous improvement. For this video, I also won't be discussing each raw converter's color rendering that will come in a separate video. With that out of the way, on to the list. At number four is Luminar Neo. Luminar earns its place on this list thanks to its superior global tone adjustments. It delivers excellent detail recovery while targeting the correct tonal ranges, maintaining strong contrast, and avoiding that washed out look you often get with weaker raw editors. As you can see here, it brightens the shadows cleanly while keeping the sky mostly untouched, and its highlight recovery behaves just as well. This makes Luminar Neo much easier to use since you often don't need to go through masking to achieve a high quality edit. And when it comes to masking, Luminar is as comprehensive as every other editor on this list. It supports AI masking via simple point and click or through automatic detection of predefined elements such as sky, water, people, and more. Its standout feature is definitely its sky masking which tends to be more precise than its competitors. Luminar also includes a very intuitive luminosity masking tool that works great for accurately isolating complex foregrounds. In 2025, Luminar's feature set improved even further with one-click AI raw auto adjustments, perfect for speeding up your workflow through batch processing. They also added a photo restoration tool and the ability to create photo galleries among many other enhancements. In terms of weaknesses, I'd say its shadow adjustment has less usable dynamic range compared to its competitors. As you can see here, even at maximum, the shadows remain fairly dark, while other editors can push them significantly higher. Its shadow slider also has a tendency to introduce halo artifacts when pushed too far, as shown in this example. Another limitation is its AI masking accuracy which falls behind its rivals. You can see here how it struggles to correctly isolate people in the image. It also has difficulty generating clean masks for complex hair or fur, as shown in this example. Additionally, its point-and-click AI masking cannot handle smaller elements like eyes or eyebrows, something you may need for portrait retouching. Finally, its brush lacks edge detection, making precise manual masks harder to achieve, and it's the only raw editor in this list without this feature. At number three is On One Photo Raw 2026. Like Luminar Neo, On One Photo Raw earns its spot on this list for its excellent tonal adjustments. Its shadow slider has outstanding dynamic range with no visible artifacts, and I especially like using it for brightening low light images. Its highlight recovery is also very effective in bringing back detail in blown out skies or bright night scenes. In 2025, On One widened its lead over Luminar in AI masking with the introduction of subject masking. As you can see here, it handles extremely complex hair with ease, something Luminar still struggles with. Another advantage of On One over Luminar is the overall precision of its AI masking. Here, I'm able to get a clean selection of all the people in this image, whereas Luminar often makes noticeable errors. However, On One does have disadvantages. Its biggest weakness compared to Luminar is the lack of precision in its global adjustments. As shown here, its shadows adjustment affects not only the darker tones, 
but also lifts the brighter tones incorrectly, which reduces contrast and lowers overall image quality. The same issue applies to its highlight adjustment. Because of this, you'll often need to rely on AI masking to get a proper edit, which adds extra steps to your workflow. Another drawback is On One's more complicated interface and workflow. Some basic tasks in On One require far too many steps. For example, just adding clarity to this tree stump requires navigating to local, creating a mask, copying the mask, going to effects, adding a dynamic contrast filter, pasting the mask, and then adjusting the slider. In Luminar, this adjustment would take only one or two steps. Like Luminar, On One's point-and-click AI masking also struggles with small elements, such as eyes and eyebrows. As you can see here, when I zoom in and try to select facial features, the behavior becomes very buggy, making portrait retouching difficult. Finally, On One's luminosity masking is far less intuitive than Luminar's, which may slow you down if you rely on it heavily. So in summary, choose On One over Luminar if you want more precise subject masking. You need sophisticated mask combinations, like you want to add a subject mask to a gradient. You want high quality AI upscaling. On One currently has the best upscaling technology with Resize AI. You may also prefer On One's more natural color rendering. And I find that On One has the better sharpening tools. On the other hand, choose Luminar over On One if you want a simpler, more intuitive interface. You want more precise global adjustments. You prefer more intuitive luminosity masking. And you need features like sky replacement, HDR merging, or focus stacking, which Luminar does better. At number two is DxO Photo Lab 9. By any metric, 2025 was a banner year for DxO. They delivered their biggest update ever and finally added their most requested feature, AI masking. As the last major raw editor to adopt this technology, DxO transformed what used to be a major weakness into one of its greatest strengths almost overnight. Like on one, DxO subject masking is extremely precise capable of producing clean, well-fitting masks, even on complex hair or fur, as you can see here. However, its point-and-click masking is even more capable than on ones. It can accurately isolate complex hair and even small facial features, as shown here. On ones point-and-click masking is far more unreliable in comparison, especially when dealing with smaller elements. The EXO subject preset masking which automatically detects objects such as people, skies, and animals is also more accurate than on ones. You can see how its people mask finds every person in the scene more reliably, while on ones detection is a bit more erratic. This level of precision extends to its other subject presets like foliage and animals. Other reasons to choose DxO over on one include its more polished masking workflow, its superior AI denoising, and its noticeably snappier interface. So those are DxO's advantages, but what about its weaknesses? Are there reasons to choose On One over DxO? Definitely. You might prefer On One's lower price, which is roughly half the cost of DxO. You might also prefer On One's highlight recovery, which outperforms DxO's. As you can see here, DxO struggles to recover detail in the overexposed sky, something I've pointed out in previous videos. And this is an area DxO really needs to improve. You may also want On One for its ability to replace a background, which DxO lacks, as well as its industry-leading AI upscaling with Resize AI, and its generative remove tool, which allows large complex objects to be removed. Again, something DxO currently has no answer for. Another key consideration is if you edit iPhone RAW files, on One supports both standard RAW and Pro RAW, while DxO only supports Pro RAW. And that brings us to number one, Capture One Pro. While it was much closer this year than in years past, Capture One remains on top. Why is that so? As always, it starts with its global adjustments, which remain the gold standard in RAW editing. For example, while DxO's shadow adjustment affects an overly broad range of tones, which reduces image quality, as you can see here, 
Capture One's adjustment is extremely precise. Notice how it brings back detail in the shadows without touching the sky, very similar to Luminar but with greater dynamic range and no visible artifacts. Its Black's adjustment, which targets only the darkest tones, and its highlights recovery is equally impressive. You can see here where DxO struggles to recover color in the blown out sky, Capture One handles it beautifully. Another major advantage is Capture One's masking, which is not only accurate, but uses the GPU far more efficiently. With Capture One, I can run AI masking even on older hardware like my 2019 Intel MacBook Pro with no issues where DxO would often struggle. Capture One's point and click AI masking is also highly precise, capable of selecting very small facial features that other editors fail to detect, as shown here. But even better, Capture One is the only editor in this list with a full people masking feature that can isolate all major portrait features in a single click. Its hair masking is particularly impressive, handling even the most complex edges effortlessly. This year, Capture One's feature set became even stronger with the addition of portrait retouching tools. You can now remove blemishes, reduce under eye shadows, enhance eyes and teeth automatically with no masking required. Capture One is the only raw editor in this list with this built-in retouching tools. So those are the advantages of Capture One. What about the disadvantages? Are there any reasons to choose DxO over Capture One? Absolutely. The first reason is price. Capture One's perpetual license now costs $368, and this price was just recently increased. And if you upgrade after two years, the discount is only about 20%, meaning you'll still need to pay roughly $300 for the upgrade. In comparison, DxO Photo Lab costs $219 with a far more reasonable $99 upgrade price. Another reason to choose DxO over Capture One is its far superior denoising. Capture One still has no AI denoising even in 2025. So if you shoot in low light, Capture One has no tool to remove the unsightly grain as shown in this example. DxO has also the superior clarity adjustment, which is also called micro contrast. While DxO correctly brings out fine detail in this tree stump, Capture One's version introduces unsightly halos, incorrectly targeting the edges instead of the actual texture. And this is not how a clarity tool is supposed to behave. Its dehaze adjustment is also weaker. Capture One tends to darken already dark areas rather than focusing the adjustment on washed out or hazy regions, which is the proper way a dehaze tool should function. Also, if you edit landscapes, DxO's control line tool is much smarter and more intuitive than Capture One's luminosity masking tool when it comes to precisely masking complex foregrounds. So there you have it, the top four raw editors of 2025. As you have seen, all the editors in this list are extremely capable and will produce for you outstanding results if used correctly. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if I missed any raw editor or if you agree or disagree with my rankings. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And by the way, if you're planning to purchase any of the raw editors mentioned in this video, make sure to use my code and link in the description to get a lower price while supporting the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.